Welcome back to class. We talk about set chapter 6 of uh, the open economy and we are in part 6.3 where we talk about exchange rates. Until now we have talked about the determinants of the real exchange rate and we have looked at several shocks which influence the real exchange rate. Now it is time to switch from the real exchange rate to the nominal exchange rate. So, in this part, we'll talk about the determinants of the nominal exchange rate. Nevertheless, we will uh, start with the definition of the real exchange rate and uh, solve this relationship for the nominal exchange rate E. So, we have to uh, multiply through by the reciprocal value of this fraction and we get to equation 23. Now, we can also express this relationship in changes. And the change in the nominal exchange rate is equal to the change in the real exchange rate plus the change in the foreign price level minus the change in the domestic price level. Or if you want to, uh, the change in the nominal exchange rate is equal to the change in the real exchange rate plus, and then here we have here in brackets the inflation differential, the inflation rate in the foreign economy minus the inflation rate in the domestic economy. So this relationship tells you that if a country has a high rate of inflation relative to the US, so if one country has a higher inflation rate, pi star is larger than pi, then a dollar will buy an increasing amount of foreign currency over time, so the exchange rate will increase. Once more, in case that here the inflation differential is positive and the inflation rate in the foreign economy is higher than the inflation rate in the domestic economy in the US, then the exchange rate will increase. This increase of the exchange rate is an appreciation of the domestic currency an appreciation of the US dollar and a depreciation of the foreign currency. So this relationship here tells you a country which has problems with the internal price stability, like a country which has problems with inflation, also has problems with the external price stability, has a problem with a depreciation of their currency. Let's have a look at the empirical evidence. Um, th here we have empirical evidence for a cross-section of countries. We have here the inflation differential. It is the inflation rate in one country minus the inflation rate in the US. On the vertical axis, there's a percentage change in the nominal exchange rate. And you can see here that there is indeed this positive relationship in case that the inflation differential is positive, then the exchange rate increases. And in case that the inflation differential is negative, then the exchange rate decreases. The next topic deals with the purchasing power parity. And one version of the purchasing power parity is the law of one price. The law of one price states, that the same good cannot sell for different prices in different locations at the same time. We already had a look at this numerical example where we talked about selling cars in the US or selling cars in Japan. We learned that the price of the American car measured in yen is equal to 3000 yens, while the car is sold in Japan for 6000 yens. In case that there is this kind of price difference, it will be the case that arbitrageurs will enter this market and they try to buy low, they try to buy low and sell high. They buy low in the US and they sell high in the Japan because of the fact there is this price difference. You can get a car in the US for 3000 yens and you can sell it in Japan for 6 thousand yens. So in a first step it is a case that when you want to perform this kind of uh, arbitrage game 
you need dollars because you need to buy American cars in the US, so you need dollars. The demand for dollars will increase and this will lead to an increase of the exchange rate. Furthermore, the additional demand for American cars will drive the American car price upwards. Afterwards, this good is shipped to Japan and this additional supply of cars in the Japanese car market will lead to a downward pressure on the Japanese price. So in the end, it will be the case that an adjustment process will take place. The exchange rate increases, an appreciation of the dollar, a depreciation of the yen. The price in the US will increase and the price in Japan will decrease until, in the end, the law of one price holds. This is the idea behind the law of one price, that the same good is sold for the same price in different locations at the same time. When it comes to the law of one price, we focus on the price of a single good. When we talk about absolute purchasing power parity, then we focus on the price of a basket of goods. When absolute purchasing power parity holds, the price of a basket of goods in the domestic economy is equal to the price of a basket of goods in the foreign economy, and therefore the numerator and the denominator has the same value. And then uh, it will be also the case that the real exchange rate will be equal to 1. The last topic, which is covered in this chapter on purchasing power parity, is the so-called Big Mac Index. You can see here one table of the Big Mac Index, and I would like to focus on this row where the Big Mac table talks about Denmark. But let's start to clarify the idea behind the Big Mac Index. Like a popular way of studying purchasing power parity is to use the Big Mac Index, which is developed by the journal The Economist. Why should we study Big Macs for studying purchasing power parity? A nice thing, a nice characteristic about the Big Mac is that it is more or less homogeneous around the world. There are no difference in quality. When you enter a McDonald's store somewhere in the world, you have an expectation about what kind of quality do you get. Furthermore, the preference seems to be the same all over the world, like the kids like it and the parents do not like it too much. Unfortunately, the Big Mac is not an internationally traded good, so you cannot trade Big Macs. But you could, for example, trade tomatoes or you could trade beef. This is possible. The ingredients which are used to create a Big Mac, these are tradable goods. Furthermore, the Big Mac price can be interpreted as a producer price index because various domestically produced ingredients are used to produce a Big Mac. So you need, for example, the ingredient labor because some people are creating this Big Mac and selling this Big Mac, cleaning the restaurant. You need the restaurant, so the price of land or the rent for this location will influence the Big Mac price. So a lot of factor costs influence the Big Mac price, but these kind of factors are also used to produce other goods which can be traded internationally. Therefore, we want to regard the Big Mac price as a kind of producer price index. Let's go back to this kind of table here. In Denmark, uh, the Big Mac is sold at 28 Danish krona. Uh, then a calculation is made in uh, what is the price of this uh, Big Mac measured in US dollars. There is one column with an implied PPP of the dollar. The actual exchange rate is at 470 Danish krona for US dollar. And the degree of undervaluation or overvaluation is plus 
67%. I would like to talk about this row now and would like to highlight how this row is calculated. So the Big Mac sells in Denmark at 28 Danish krona and a Big Mac is sold in the US for $3.57 US cents. The implied PPP of the dollar, like this column, contains the so-called equilibrium exchange rate. How is this equilibrium exchange rate calculated? It is the price measured in Danish krona divided by the price in US dollar. So 28 divided by 3.57 is equal to 7.84 Danish krona for US dollar. So you find uh, this value here in the implied PPP of the dollar column. In the next step, it is very important to know this implicit assumption that goods prices do not adjust. So the Big Mac table assumes that the goods prices do not change. The actual exchange rate at this point in time was equal to 4.7 Danish krona for one US dollar. If one compares the actual exchange rate with the equilibrium exchange rate of the Danish krona, then we find out that the Danish krona is overvalued. What is the degree of overvaluation? We have to compute um, equilibrium exchange rate minus actual exchange rate divided by the actual exchange rate. So the implied PPP core value, the equilibrium exchange rate minus the actual exchange rate divided by the actual exchange rate gives you this value of plus 0.6. Six, eight. And here we find the degree of overvaluation is 67%. So over time, it is expected that the exchange rate should adjust. Over time, the exchange rate should increase from the level 4.70 to the level 7.8. This is the main message of the Big Mac Index. But now we are also at the end of this chapter. Thank you very much for watching all the videos. Have a nice day. Bye bye.